People, the gay rights people certainly have their work cut out ahead of them in this conservative state um, to convince the legislature that there needs to be protection for them. In, in both Idaho and at the federal level, uh, people are protected from job discrimination based on their race, sex, color, religion, national origin, age for the older worker, and disability. That interview from 1991, the first official year of the Boise Pride Festival and Parade. It actually began two years earlier with just about two dozen people in attendance, and there really wasn't a whole lot of fanfare. Now, some 30 years later, we're asking, is there more acceptance and tolerance of the LGBTQ community in Idaho? Kim Fields takes a look back through the years, through the eyes of someone who's been there from the very beginning. Our very first Pride Festival that we held in Boise um, was actually really uh, much different than I think what most people would imagine. And it was long before the turnout of 70,000 people at last year's Boise Pride Fest. The year was 1989. Joe Kibbe remembers it well. We had to attend our first Boise Pride Festival in paper bags. We had holes cut out for our eyes, and we had a very small gathering in the park. Um, and then we masked ourselves off and went back on our way. Um, you know, it was a very different time back in Boise in the late 80s. And Joe, was that to hide your identity, I take it? Yeah, um, Boise was not a safe place to be out and uh, open in the late 80s, very quick, very fast. There was uh, not very many of us and um, it, it was very different. Very solitude, very, very secretive, very alone. <laughs> By 1991, the small gathering had moved to the State House steps. The group had become more organized and not as fearful of being out. And put together what would have been probably considered the first Pride Parade, uh, where you could see individuals come out and you could uh, experience uh, what would be considered probably uh, a more traditional celebration. As the years went by, support grew, but Joe says there was still resistance, like this exchange at the 2005 Boise Pride Fest. What were your feelings then when, when you were met with hesitation and intolerance? Um, myself, personally, I, I always view that as a educational opportunity um, to introduce myself as just a member of the community. Yes, I may be um, a member of the LGBT community and uh, identify as a gay male, but I think that's an opportunity to reach out and educate people um, about what our community is actually about. I, I'm a member of the community. I, I hold a job. I um, you know, pay my taxes, I support city, city services. I, I'm just here to be a part of Idaho and be considered just another individual. But I, I, it makes me sad that that still had occurred at that point in time where, you know, we're still met with resistance, fear, misunderstanding. Um, and there's still work to do to that today. And why is that important for you to be out and to be proud um, and to be able to do that with no longer wearing your masks? Um, I believe that we've come quite a far um, distance within uh, the last 30 years um, that we've been organized as a, a community. Um, obviously, there's still more work to do, but um, I think the majority of the state, if you look at individuals and not specifically the lawmakers that actually make our laws, I think Idaho is a fairly tolerant place that has room for acceptance and has room to ask those questions. How can we be a better community and how do we learn to live with one another without necessarily having to have friction on an everyday basis? Uh, Joe says as a gay man in the year 2020, he could still be met with hostility and some stares in public. But back to what the woman said at the beginning of this story, that the gay rights people will have their work cut out for them to convince the legislature that they need to be a protected class. She's actually right in that regard. They have had their work cut out for them. Add the words has tried 14 times to pass state legislation to just add those four words. But this month, the Supreme Court did rule that federal law does protect the LGBTQ community from discrimination.